Uh, hello and welcome to Open Logic. In this video, we're going to look at how PN junction works in semiconductor. Now starting from an intrinsic semiconductor, we can dope one side of it to become P-type semiconductor and the other side to become N-type semiconductor. And basically, that means in the P region, some electrons are replaced by electron holes. Whereas in the N region, there are more electrons and these extra electrons are free moving electrons. And there you go, this is how a PN junction is created. To make the discussion easier, from now onwards, I'll be referring to the free moving electrons as red electrons and those electrons bounded by covalent bond as white electrons. Alright, first stop, let's talk about zero bias, where we don't apply voltage across the PN junction. There are two areas to look into, the first one is the charge carrier's distribution. In the P region, the charge carriers are the electron holes, and in the N region, the charge carriers are the free moving electrons. It may seem like that the P region is positively charged and the N region is negatively charged, but they are both in fact neutral. In the P region, this may seem like a missing electron, but the accepted atom has one less proton. Similarly, in the N region, this may seem like an extra electron, but the donor atom has one extra proton. And so, the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal in the block. Now, these charge carriers can move around, and at one point or another, a red electron is bound to combine with an electron hole. When a red electron combines with an electron hole, it can no longer move freely. And technically, it becomes a white electron. Effectively, on a block level, red electrons move into the P region and combine with electron holes. As a result, the electron holes disappear and the red electrons become white electrons. Alright, and now the second area. This middle region seems like a bunch of white electrons, but if we look into the atom level, this atom gains one extra electron and becomes a negative ion, and this atom here loses one electron and becomes a positive ion. As more electrons combine with electron holes, more ions are created in the middle and they collectively form a depletion region. The whole block is still neutral generally, but there is a localized electric field in the middle. And this area here will be more positively charged and this area here will be more negatively charged. As a result, the remaining red electrons can no longer cross to the P region as they are pushed back by the negative ions here. In the same way, the white electrons here are attracted to the positive ions and therefore the electron holes are prevented from crossing over. Now thanks to the depletion region, the charge carriers are preserved in their respective region. Without it, the red electrons can combine with the electron holes and practically, this whole block will become an intrinsic semiconductor again. Alright, now let's move to forward bias. For the bias is where we apply a positive voltage at the P region and a negative voltage at the N region. Now bear in mind that there is a counter electric field in the middle. We will need to apply a voltage large enough to overcome it for this PN junction to be in forward bias. And technically, if the voltage is large enough, the red electron should be able to cross the depletion region. But anyway, the white electrons in the P region are also drawn to the positive terminal. At one point of time, the negative ion would lose its electron, and the effect of the depletion region is reduced. And thus, a red electron can cross the depletion region more easily than before. Having said that, a red electron when it crosses to the P region, it would most likely be combined with an electron hole. Now, let's look at it from the block level. Let's remove the depletion region to better visualize the flow of the charge carriers. In the P region, white electrons move towards the positive terminal, and effectively electron holes move towards the negative terminal. At the same time in the N region, red electrons move towards the positive terminal. And somewhere in the middle, the red electrons will combine with electron holes and from then onwards move as white electrons. And there is a possibility that the red electrons do not combine with electron holes in the middle and travel deeper into the P region. 
but since there are waves of incoming electron holes, the red electrons would most likely be combined with them eventually. The same thing applies for the electron holes. If they manage to travel deeper into the end region, they would most likely be combined with incoming waves of free moving electrons. And finally, reversed bias. This is where we apply a positive voltage at the N region and a negative voltage at the P region. In the N region, the red electrons are pulled towards the positive terminal. The white electrons cannot really move. In the P region, the white electrons can move but only up until all the electron holes are being pushed towards the negative terminal. From then onwards, all the white electrons are stuck because there are no electron holes to move on to. Now, since the charge carriers are being pushed towards the end, the depletion region is widened. But in my opinion, this is an after effect. This is not the reason why the charge carriers cannot move. Once again, the white electrons cannot move forward because there are no electron holes in the end region. Effectively, in a reversed bias mode, a PN junction cannot conduct electric current. There are several ways to make current flow through a PN junction in reversed bias mode. One is to increase the temperature, and another one is to increase the voltage so high that the PN junction breaks down. There is another mechanism which is important to understand transistor. If we manage to introduce red electrons here, the red electrons will be able to flow across the PN junction. Or if we are able to introduce electron holes here, then the white electrons can move. We will look into this in future video. Now in summary, a PN junction serves as a basic control for electric current flow. It allows current to flow through in forward bias mode, and it blocks current in reversed bias. Alright, that's it for this time around. Thanks for watching. I hope the video has been helpful. Please support by clicking like, share, and subscribe.